Hello and a very good morning. It's Saturday the 2nd of November. I'm Ronan Berry and you're very welcome to Saturday View here on Midlands 103. And um, what a week it has been. Busy one. Everybody seems to be kind of confused as to what day of the week it actually is, given the bank holiday. Then we had Halloween on Thursday evening, even though it felt like last weekend might have been Halloween or was it going to be this weekend. And there seems to be that kind of a general confusion overall that happens. But that maybe gives us a chance to say, well, is that reflective of modern life? Are we just in this kind of constant spin and tizzy of busyness? And I suggested even talking to Aidan there before I came on um, before beforehand that we've replaced talking about the weather with speaking about how busy we are and how quick time is passing. And that when you think about it, November is a month where traditionally we were taking time to pause and to reflect and to remember loved ones past or even to remember our ancestors and reflect on what had got us to where we are and connect again maybe with nature and with spirituality. But that's a question we have is at this time in in 2024, have a lot of us forgotten how to do that and can we reconnect? And we're going to explore that and look at some religious and some pagan traditions throughout the show today that are very prevalent this time of year. And if you just look and recount what's happening across the world in the Middle East and headlines today that everyone in North Gaza is at imminent risk of debt. That's greeting us on a main news website this morning. It says the situation in northern Gaza is apocalyptic as Israel pursues a military offensive against Hamas militants in the area. And that warning comes from the United Nations. And we look across into Ukraine. Uh, The Russian invasion will enter its third year in just a few months' time. The number of Ukrainians displaced by the war and living in Ireland has fallen a little bit in the last while to about 35,833 people, but it's still almost 36,000 people who were forced out of their homes almost three years ago. We look just across the water, really, to Spain, where many people would have family, friends, take holidays, maybe even have properties over there, and look at what's happening Death toll has hit 205 already as rescuers begin their searches for even more victims. And that number is set to rise, unfortunately, as well. And you look at the images of the water pushing cars and vans down the street as if there were little sticks in a stream too. We come closer to home and even things like the cost of living crisis is always there. We're going into a general election, but the cost of living, housing, healthcare, everything always front and centre. The report on NEFET as well and the performance during COVID and talks about a COVID inquiry very much in the news this week too. And still undoubtedly a lot of trauma there for a lot of people. And on this show, we've spoken a lot about maybe the lack of connection and disconnection that has happened during all those lockdowns and asked the question, have we actually got back there yet? And, you know, if you look at it from a cold retail perspective, Many retailers will tell you the footfall and the spend in shops is not what it was in 2019 and, and probably will never be back there again, unfortunately. But we can ask the same question maybe about the relationships we build, about our connectivity, about our friendships. Are they at the same level as they were, which is now five years ago? And if they're not, can we actually change that? And on last week's show, you heard me where I went to a men's coffee morning out in Muckla Community Centre recently and a fantastic example of what's happening in our local communities. But we look at that uncertainty that's out there overall. I mean, just look at the coverage of the US general election. That's only, what, about four days away at this point, or even three days away. Um, 65 million Americans have already voted in it. But the barrage of attacks and slights and slurs just seems to continue there. And um, neck and neck and very, very hard one to call. So there is so much happening, so much going on at any one time. So let's begin by looking back, maybe, and trying to reflect on what November traditionally meant. And uh, Ronan Scully will be well known to many of you listening. And he's renowned for his compassion and hard work with extensive experience as a volunteer and programme coordinator in developing countries, including for the Irish charity Goal in Kolkata, in India, in Nepal, in Ethiopia and Angola. And he's now the regional representative in the West and Midlands of Ireland for Self Help Africa. And Ronan has been posting and publishing and has a few articles in the papers this week. And he kind of is asking that. He says, November is a month to remember loved ones who have passed away and also a time to pause, reflect and remember. And given that Halloween is over and already we're hearing jingles and we're being teased for you know what, a big uh, event that happens on the 25th of December and it's almost like we're not allowed resisted. We have to jump on that bandwagon, jump on that locomotive and get right into Christmas straight away. And I think a lot of us are thinking, no, we're not. We're nowhere near ready for that yet. We just need a little 
bit of a break. Ronan, would you concur? Yes, uh, and thanks for having me on your programme, Ronan, and congrats on and, and all your, your, your great uh, reporting and your great programmes and presenting over the last uh, uh, while. Yeah, no, but I, I, I fully agree with you. I just think for me, and especially the last number of years, n- November has become a, a time for me to sort of refocus, reset the batteries a bit. Um, also, you know, it, it's a special time for us to remember our loved ones gone before us. Um, and a lot of them have paved the way for us or, you know, our parents or, you know, that have, have, have gone on or grandparents, you know, members of our families, you know, colleagues, friends, neighbours who have have passed away, some recently, some in, some in the past. And it's important, you know, it's an important month, so it is to remember our loved ones, those gone before us. But for me, it's a time just to stop a bit, to recharge the batteries uh, you know, you look around at nature, you know, even when I was driving this morning coming from, from Galway and, and to see the colours on the trees, the leaves falling, you know, nature itself is sort of, you know, closing up a little bit and, and life is like that. There's so many seasons in our lives um, and life is short, you know, it, it makes you, the seasons help us to look at life and, and, and realise life is short and it's important for us to live life to the fullest um, you know, to do the best we can to be there for one another uh, because life is short and we do lose members of our families, of our friendships, uh, of our colleagues and work over the years. Uh, and, and, and November is that time when, when we as a, as a people and as a faith uh, uh, come together to remember of lo- our loved ones, whether it's having special masses during the month of November, whether it's visiting uh, graveyards, saying special prayers, um, lighting special candles for our loved ones gone to the past and hoping that they're, uh, you know, living eternal life in heaven uh, and, and, and hopefully that they're they're looking after us. For me, uh, during this time, I, I tend to pray to a lot of uh, my, my loved ones gone before us to help me to, I suppose, live out my life as lovingly and as faithfully and, and, and as good uh, as they did and to thank them for giving me the the gifts that I have today, the, uh, you know, in gratitude for, for what they did. They've paved the way for a lot of us. And we're very lucky in, in some ways. That, you know, we live in a time when we've when, when there is plenty. And, you know, it's sad for me when I go to different countries in Africa, the, you know, to see the, the, the fact that, you know, that there's still so many people hungry. Uh, and we're in this time where we're, there, there's a time of plenty. We've so much money, we've so much stuff, and yet we have so many homeless here in Ireland. We've so many poor in our world, uh, and yet we're spending billions, billions on these wars and conflicts that are going on. You see what's happening in Gaza and the Middle East, uh, the Lebanon. You see what's happening in Sudan at the moment, like, you know, millions of people uh, in a famine. Over a million people have been killed in Ethiopia in the last three years in a war that that no one has has heard much about because the media haven't covered it. Um, So, you know, it's a time to be thankful for our, our ancestors, I suppose, in some ways, that have paved the way for us and given us opportunities that they didn't have. They worked so hard. They were people of great faith uh, and, and they set down uh, the way for us. And it's up to us now to try and, I suppose, to refocus at this time of November. You know, don't be jumping to Christmas straight away. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I, 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 was, I was leaving Galway this morning, the Christmas lights were up in, in, in Air Square. Like, I was going, how did that happen? Like, you know, and, uh, you know, but, but for me, November uh, has become a, a special month for me, especially as I get older. I, I realise what life's all about. Life is short. Uh, and it's a time to remember our loved ones that have done so much for us and given us so many opportunities and to be thankful for them and to, you know, go to Mass and remember them, light candles and remember them, um, talk about what the great things that they did uh, and, and to pray to them as well to help us to look after uh, ourselves and our loved ones uh, 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 and the life that we have. And we're going to explore their religious significance because mm. yesterday was the Feast of All Saints, today mm. is All Souls Day and that is not just a Christian thing, it's very much reflected across the world like, you know, the Day of the Dead in, in Mexico and, and particularly in South American countries as well as the likes of Diwali, the Hindu Festival of Light and we're going to learn more and explore that in just a short while on the show too about what it means and later on we're going to talk about a fire ceremony that's taken place in the Midlands this evening and it's about I suppose embracing that dark period and, and welcoming that darker part of the year and it's deep rooted back into ancient times as well but before we touch on that I'm going to take you back to a word you used you mentioned about living life to the fullest 
And there's almost a juxtaposition in that because maybe sometimes our lives are too full, but we're not living life to its fullest. So for you, what does the definition of, of living life to its fullest mean? Well, I suppose for me, like it, it's, it's about being grateful. Uh, gratitude is, is something that's very important in my life, you know, and especially from, you know, where I'm at, they're coming from, like, you know, recently I was out in Africa and like, you know, people had to go with buckets maybe three or four miles to get water. Uh, and like all of a sudden I come home and suddenly I'm in the kitchen at home and I'm able to go to a tap and water comes out of the tap and I'm able to have a drink of water. And I'm, I suppose it's about being grateful for life and that's what I mean about living life for the fullest, being grateful for the, the gifts we have, the talents we have, for the people that we have in our lives, uh, for the gift of being able to go up every morning. Um, you know, because lots of people get up every morning and they don't have water, they don't have food. Uh Maybe they don't have a bed to sleep and they don't have a roof over their heads. And so when we have those things, you know, we're, we're actually should be grateful for those things. And that's what I mean about living life to the fullest, but also in trying to help people. Like for me, there's no better thing in life than to love someone or care for someone or be there for someone. And whether that's someone in your own family or in your town or in your village or in your country or in your world, there's no better thing to be able to help someone. And for me, the, the glory of God is a person fully alive in helping people in caring for people and in appreciating and being grateful for the good things in their lives and then trying to share that with the people around them. Um, and it's the little things, the little things. I'll always remember like Brother Sylvester, the Lord of mercy on him, you know, when we used to play football, he used to say, take your points, your goals will come. So sometimes it's appreciating the little things and then when the big things come to appreciate them too, you know. So it's, it's, it's about that, you know. You have a unique perspective on, on life, on cultures, on societies right across the world that you can compare to modern life in Ireland at the minute. Has Irish society changed a lot in a short space of time or are we just kind of maybe on a par with what's happening globally? Well, especially, uh, like, I mean, like technology, the last 15, 20 years, the world has just gone on a, a, a speed trip, so to have in, in some shape or form, like, and like everything's, you know, at the press of a button and you get all the, the word. Like before, when I, I remember when I first went to Africa, so 37 years ago now, uh, and out to India, like for me to get a message home, like could take a month. You know, I, I, there was no postal system that I could post from Africa, from India. I'd, I'd wait until someone was going home. Now, you know, you have WhatsApp, you have internet, you have all these ty- type of things. So everything's speed and everyone wants information uh, straight away. And I think what happens is we're, we're actually saturated with information. Like uh, And like, that's why I think November is such an important month for us to sort of just to slow down a little bit, to pause, to refocus, to reset, think about life, think about our loved ones that went before us. The seasons are changing. We're coming into the sort of, you know, the winter months, you know, to remember the year that was. Remember the loved ones that died during this year. Remember, this, you know, the sadness that's happening in our world where there's so many people dying in Gaza and uh, Lebanon and parts of Africa and parts of Haiti and parts of South America. You know, like there's something like there's 36 major conflicts happening in our world at the moment and probably we only know about three or four of them. So it's, it's about that refocus, uh, re-loving, re, 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 re-entering into our faith, re-entering into our uh, life, uh, what's important in our lives. What is important in your life today? And, uh, you know, have you got the courage then to sort of to, to go about your life, you know, what you want, your dreams, to say happier those that are dream dreams, but even more happier those that try to achieve them. Like, And I, I use that month of November to remember my loved ones, to go to mass, daily mass, you know, remember them, uh, pray to them. Um, and ask God to look after us and our families and our world and to pray for peace. I think peace is so needed in our world, you know, in our lives, whether it's our families, whether it's our our own country of Ireland, uh, but definitely our world needs peace at this present time and November is a special time to pray to our loved ones uh, for peace in our world and for peace in our lives. Which of course is one of the kind of the, the most, the original message of Christmas as well, yeah. that peace on earth again, probably a, an element of it that is 
is almost being bypassed given the, the the relentless sort of rush that we have up to it and particularly now from earlier you know, we all see it from a couple of weeks ago Halloween decorations disappearing in shops being replaced with Christmas items and sweets and we've kind of got used to it but there seems to be kind of a little sort of a, a mental kickback by some people but was it always a time of the year that had significance for you or was there a point in your life where you, you know the, the meaning of November and taking the time to pause and reflect and remember kind of struck you? Well, it, 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 well, for me, it always was because I suppose uh, I'd be, I'd have a great faith, and 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 I would always have, try to go to daily mass. So it was part of the the church calendar, I suppose, and it was a time then to remember loved ones. And then, according as you get older, you, you you start losing a lot of people in your lives, whether it's friends or family members or neighbours or colleagues at work, you know. Then people have tragedies in your life, you know, like you know we, we've lost it the love of our lives, young Aoife, our niece. And, you know, there's not a day goes past that we don't remember her. But I suppose November is a special time to remember those that are close to us that have gone before us and have such an impact on our lives. You know what I mean? And like, I suppose like, you know, it's all souls day today. And, you know, this was a a thing that happened back in the 11th century. It was, you know, it was was a sort of a a Catholic belief that became more important as as time went along. And it's a time when Catholics come together today to remember their loved ones, to visit the cemetery, to go to a special mass, and then to use that month in November to remember our our loved ones gone before us uh, and and to be grateful for for what they have done in our lives, to give us the opportunities that maybe they didn't have. Especially our elder, elderly relatives that have, you know, worked so hard during hard times in in Ireland, you know, uh, you know, over, you know, the last hundred years that have done so much to to to, to sort of make Ireland a better place uh, for us in some ways, and and to be thankful for what they've done for us, and to to go to mass and remember them, go to their graveside, say a special prayer, light a special candle, you know, in some ways, you know, light the candle to banish the darkness and to sort of, uh, you know, look, look at the future with hope and, and, and asking them to look after us and be there for us as we go through our own life journey. Um, and as I said, like, there's no better thing you can do in life than to help someone or care for someone and be there for someone. And we all need help and support at times, and especially when it's a time of grief. Um, you know, people are great, neighbours are great, family are great to help you through that grief. Um, and you never get over grief. It's It's a daily battle so it is because when you love someone so much to lose them um, it can be very devastating uh, but they're with us in a, in a new sort of spirit so they are and they're, they're there for us now to, to pray to to help us through our journey in life and to ask God to, to be with us uh, each day of our lives. You've had that experience as I say looking across the world as well did you you've seen how other religions other cultures then also mark that kind of time of year where there is that more darkness comes in and it's kind of turning that darkness into a positive also. Fire, light is a huge part of that. Tell us about your experience. Yeah, and absolutely. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm like, as I said, I, li- I lived in in India and in Calcutta and like, in, you know, you'll have a guest on later on to be talking about Diwali, you know, the festival of, of light. But uh, in a lot of the cultures I've been in and particularly in Africa as well, you know, the, you know, the remembrance of their loved ones, of, of those that have gone before them, is so important to them, their ancestors, to, to pray to them, to remember them, to have different types of festivals, you know, you know whether it's different religions or whatever that might be. But there's there's always light involved in these festivals, like I suppose, and they're, they're hoping that that light, you know, that the light of that person that went before them, their light will guide guide them along their journey and be a light for them along the way and that's why you know we in the Catholic faith you know we remember our loved ones we, we light the candles because and we asked our loved ones gone before us to help us to live our lives as lovingly and as faithfully as they did but across the world you know remembrance of people that have gone before us is, is such a huge thing for people of all faiths uh, and especially those that have helped us and have guided us and loved us and cared for us and you know, and, and you know, at times like today, I, I remember all members of my family, and you know, I pray that they, they're enjoying an eternal life and that they're looking after us and guiding us. And I have a little um, uh, November altar that I have at home, uh, and I've all the, the mass cards of family members and friends and parents of friends, and um, you know, my best friend Donald Rabbit. I pray to him every day, so I am um, to help me to to be as good as he was. He was a great person. Um, he done so much for 
the, the people at Clara and for the GEA and for, uh, you know, he was just a, a, a fantastic, full of life person, like, you know what I mean? And I, I pray to him that he, he'll give me the, the grace, true God, to, 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 to be as loving and as caring as, as he was. And I think that's that's what life's about. It's about doing the best we can for one another, being there for one another. And I use November as a time to, uh, I suppose, to pause, as you said, and to reflect on life and to refocus on life and to, you know, to sort of look at what life's about and try to have the courage then to go after my dreams, you know, through my prayer life and through my my my, my personal life and through my work life and try to do the best I can to help people, whether that's people in Clara, in the Midlands, in Galway where I live, or people of Ireland, or it's out in Africa where I, I, I work a lot and I'm heading out again in a few weeks' time to Kenya. And, um, you know, there's serious drought in Kenya and in Ethiopia and in Sudan, there's famine. Uh, and, you know, I just want to thank everyone as well that helped me out with the work I do. And I want to thank you, Ronan, and everyone in Midlands 3, uh, 103 for the great support they give us in the work I do in, in Africa. And, and you give it to so many charities. And But but November is a time to reflect and pause. Don't jump forward to, to December and Christmas. I know people have to get certain things and stuff like that. But do take a, a time today. It's all Souls Day, as I say. Go and visit your your graves of your loved ones, remember them, say a prayer for them, um, ask them to help you and, um, you know, and just be there for one another. You know, it's a time to reflect. We, as Irish people, and we touch on this, we seem to do that quite well. You know, the long Irish wakes, the gathering communities. Do we do we not do so well the bit afterwards, as you say, remembering ancestors? Are we, in comparison, to say, to like maybe Mexico or South America, where it's a massive part of their, their life in this time of year, have we lost a little bit of that in Ireland, do you think? We probably have around this time of the year, you know what I mean? I think it was more celebrated, you know, when I was growing up. Like, you know, I think there's just so much happening at the moment that it's hard to get a time and space to... And that's what I'm trying to say to people when they get an opportunity during this month of November. And especially, like, you know, yesterday was All Saints Day, today is All Souls Day. But, you know, the church is dedicated November as a time of remembrance. So if you do get a time during this month to just... Go to your sacred place, go to your graves of your loved ones, go to a church or wherever you get that uh, spiritual experience and just stop for a while mm. and be thankful for the loved ones that went before us. Pray to them, pray for them as well that, you know, that, that they are, you know, uh, getting the eternal rewards that they deserve. And and also then to just to, you ask them to, to guide you during this month and then to you know, reflect in your own life and have the courage to go about your dreams and your prayers to try and make a, a difference in this world where it needs so much peace and so much love and so much care because there's so much negativity out there that you, you know it can affect people in different ways and we all need to be there for one another to be positive to be prayerful and reflective and to reach out the hand of friendship and care to one another uh, and I, I'm saying that you know in your families in your workplaces um, you, you don't have to be going out to places where I go to, you can do it in your own villages, in your own, there's people for in need of care, no matter where we are in, in our world mm. at this present time. And it could be, as you said, a, a huge range of things that people might need care for as well. But I think as well too, look, it is, it's a seasonal thing. The seasons are changing, the earth's moving, you know, the seasons are, are switching, things are happening out there. There's probably kind of a magnetic pull if people just maybe try and tap into that and just go with it and it may lead you to that place or to that graveyard or wherever it might be mm. but maybe that could be the message just take that time to just just trust it trust your instinct yeah, absolutely. it's yeah, happening I suppose out there it's, as well. it's take, take, taking a breather before the busyness of December comes that's and we all get so busy you know and even though we say we won't but we do yeah that's it uh, it's, and, uh, and it's just I suppose my message is just if they can get it a, a, a time during this month of November to reflect in their own lives, remember their loved ones, you know, whether that's, you know, going to daily mass, lighting the candle, going visiting the graveyard, uh, but just to take that time out for themselves as well. I, I think it's a time to refocus, reset, re-energise, reflect, re-pray, and look at and have the courage then to go after your, 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 you know, what's coming from your prayer life or what's coming from your reflections to, you may try and make your life a better life and to, you know, and life is short. It's so short, you know, and yeah. we're only here for a short thing, well, let's time. Assume. So let's do the best we can and do as much good and as we can like you, uh, whenever we can. And you and your family know that firsthand. It can be cruelly shortened, you know, way too, way too early as well. Ronan Scully is always an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for, for coming in this morning and, and sharing uh, your thoughts and your 
your, your sentiments and feelings around November and, and been a month to repose, reflect and remember. Thanks, Ronan. Thanks, Ronan. Um, and some of you listening in are razor sharp, of course. Uh, one listener has texted in and said, Ronan, you say that people need a bit of a break before Christmas and they've asked, why is Midlands 103 playing a bit of a Christmas ad? Now, what I'm going to say is on that ad, that is linked to a competition that is coming up, um, sponsored by Shannon Airport. And it's got, have you got somebody abroad that you'd love to be reunited with this Christmas? So, yes, there is a little bit of Christmas music on that ad, but think about the message of it. It is actually bringing a loved one back home for Christmas to be reunited with somebody. So, again, maybe right in the spirit of Christmas season anyway. But thank you for pointing that out. And, and uh, delighted to hear that. I'm not trying to be hypocritical on this, but I think as Ronan said, it is OK to just take that pause. You know, there might be some things you want to do in preparation for a new season or something that's coming up, but maybe we don't have to get pulled into the business. And I think that that little discussion there around living a full life or a, a life that's um, to its fullest, very, very different, can be very different. But let me know what you think. Lots of you have been texting in as well. Somebody's text that today is All Souls Day. Remember to pray for our dear dead. Great show. Thank you, Mary Kay. Um, um, we're going to take a quick break now. But after that, we're going to explore um, Indian culture and its approach to the changing seasons and particularly looking at Diwali, that festival of lights too. And then later on, we're going to hear about a fire ceremony that's taken place again to mark sound and that change of the year and, and bringing a bit of light into the, into the dark parts of the year too. So lots to dip into here on Saturday View. Saturday View with thanks to Lumcloon Energy, pioneering innovation, powering progress. Lumcloonenergy.com. On this morning, Saturday View, we're just taking that time to pause and reflect and use that time maybe to remember loved ones and see how we can maybe plot a course through November, that dark month. You know, people see it as being as dark and the darkness comes, the clocks have changed and Halloween is over and now it's time to start putting up the Christmas decorations and do this, that and the other. And actually, for a lot of people, it's no, 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 no. Let's just take a little pause. Let's pause and reflect. And on the show already, you've heard from Ronan Scully that are talking about his approach to and looking at the traditional roots in All Souls Day and All Saints Day. And, you know, and that is deep rooted across cultures right around the world. And you think of the likes in Mexico in particular, like the Day of the Dead. Um, we're going to talk very shortly about a fire ceremony that's taken place in Killy in County Offaly this evening. And again, it's looking at that embracing the dark part of the year, but bringing a bit of light in. So looking forward to kind of exploring that. But another festival of lights that you're probably familiar with is the Diwali um, festival. And uh, that takes place. It's a Hindu festival. So very prominent in India, of course. Um, And it's not just celebrated by the Hindus. Often other faiths maybe get involved as well. And it's certainly one that we become aware of. But let's take a look now at at kind of Indian culture when it comes to marking these changing of seasons seasons as well. I'm delighted to be joined in studio by Suginya Balakrishnan. And Suginya has been living in Tullamore for almost a decade at this point. So as a bit like Ronan Scully, has experience of cultures right across the world as well. Good morning, Suginya. Good morning, Ronan. Um, And I saw a post you had up the other day just um, marking and sort of commenting that Diwali had started as well. For people in the Irish Midlands listening maybe who have no direct experience or maybe knowledge of Diwali. Can you just tell us what it is, from, from your perspective as well, having grown up in India? Yes, uh, I would say Diwali is a major festival celebrated in India and it is a warm, vibrant celebration with unique traditions. Uh, Diwali is also known as Festival of Lights and uh, it's it's the essence of Diwali is the celebration of light over darkness and uh, good over evil. Uh, as you said, it is uh, uh, it is celebrated majority by Hindus, but it's also celebrated by other faith people like uh, Sikhs, Jains, and Buddhists too. So uh, this this type of uh, diversity uh, actually makes this as an unifying celebration, which also showcases uh, India's multicultural harmony. Uh, as uh, I also have to mention that it is this uh, Diwali falls during the season of autumn and it's it happens during the end of harvest. So it is just like any other harvest festival which is celebrated all across Europe. It can be considered as a harvest festival of India. So during Diwali, we uh, clean our homes, we decorate our homes, we make special sweets, special meals, we wear new clothes and uh, we light uh, dias, which is uh, small oil lamps, and uh, 
Uh, the major magical part of Diwali is the fireworks. We, as families, we come together to uh, to watch the sky light up with brilliant colors and sparkling patterns, uh, which is a very major part of the celebration of Diwali. Um, now, Diwali has become as an in- international festival, and uh, there are lots of Indians living all around the world. So they come together during Diwali, and they celebrate Diwali with, uh, arts and dance and music and uh, obviously food. Food is always a major part of any Indian celebration. Uh, so it is there. It is a, it is a way of Indian uh, diaspora's way of showing uh, Indians' heritage to the community they are living in. Um, I've been in Ireland for eight years, as you said, and uh, I can say that most Irish are very well aware of the festival of Diwali. And uh, it's truly heartwarming uh, when Irish people wish me for Diwali. I feel it is a sweet gesture of genuine appreciation for my culture. So I, I, I'd be giggling when they wish me for <laughs> Diwali. It's, it's, it's actually, it actually feels uh, really welcoming to be here when they uh, wish me for Diwali. Um, and uh, in Tullamore, we have a Tullamore Indian Association, uh, which has around 400 members. And uh, the organization uh, hosts a Diwali party every year. And we have this Diwali event in Tullamore, uh, St. Mary's Youth Center every year. And um, we have a uh, we have a lively DJ music and uh, a delicious spread of Indian homemade food. And I should say that even the Diwali event for this year is taking place today at St. Mary's Youth Center at half six today. So if wow. the listeners want to enjoy and experience Diwali vibes, they can just pop in and I can promise you that they'll have an absolute blast of time. I think the word sold comes to mind <laughs> straight away. The food and the other voice you can hear is Michelle Flynn. And Michelle is going to talk to us shortly because Exugini has already painted that picture and you get that sense of light, of colour, fireworks. So we think of fireworks and, you know, you think of Thursday night, there was plenty of fireworks, you know, going <laughs> across all over Ireland so and there's huge links obviously with at this time of year like you know with that with the whole sound festival and almost the beginnings of Halloween in Ireland which has kind of been obviously reflected by what Zagini is saying and with Diwali um, in India and now spreading across the world do you find as um, somebody who has moved away from India has set up home firmly in the Irish Midlands do you would you celebrate it more when you're away from home I would say because yes. Because that's a very Irish thing too, like, you know, that <laughs> people go to country music or traditional yeah. music gigs that they'd never go in their hometown, but if they're in America or Australia, they go every week. So do you embrace that's, it more when you're away? That is so true. Probably because it is our way of feeling connected to our home. So we want to emphasize or we want to uh, get involved in more of Indian events because we come sometimes can or feel little homesick. So these type of events, when they happen, and it kind of makes us feel connected to our home. And it's also an opportunity for us to show uh, our culture to the community we are living in. So we always take pride in involving in any of the Indian events happen uh, in the local community. It, it, it is actually, we look forward for any of the Indian events. And it's always dance, music, and obviously food. Who would not love it? <laughs> food and, and the, the best and finest food I can only imagine as well. Yes. So, Guinea, I'll come back to you in a few minutes now too because we're going to bring Michelle Flynn into the conversation. Uh, Michelle is time-bound a basketball match, I believe, later on. I thought we were supposed to be pausing and taking it easy and all that kind of thing. But anyway, Michelle is running a, an event in Killy this evening and um, it's a fire ceremony at 8.30pm as well. So take us to this. Let's start with an easy question. The roots of like fire Sowing, the darkness coming in, it goes back really to ancient times. It does, it does. It goes way back thousands of years and Irish history is, it's it's so, so old. Um, some people might be familiar with the Festival of Fires at Bealtaine, which is at Ishnock, which is not too far from here. So at Samhain, um again, we celebrate the different seasons. We celebrate the different times of the years, much like what Sagani was saying. Every culture does something at the same time. And we're celebrating in a similar way. Samhain, uh, for me, is very much about connecting with our ancestors. The veils between the worlds are at their thinnest at this time of the year. 
So it means that there's an opportunity for us to communicate or to connect with those that have passed, those that are in spirit. So it's a very comforting time for some. It can be also, you know, it can be a sad time for some. But we try to bring about um, a celebratory feel to it in that we must celebrate those that have passed. So little things like, you know, traditionally in, in, in Ireland, you know, you'd you'd prepare a place at the table to acknowledge the ancestors that have passed. You'd prepare a plate of food. It might be bread. It could be bacon and cabbage. It could be something traditional, but it's it's honouring the ancestors that have gone before us, those that have passed and those that are watching over us and guiding us through our every day. Now, the dark part of Samhain, as we say, we're going into the dark evenings, you know, just it is it is dark. But I always remind people that, you know, when you plant a seed, it's in the ground, it's in the dark. So it has to stay in in the dark to grow and to nurture and to eventually push its way up out through the light, which is when we come out at Imbolg in the spring. So we start to flower. So when we're going through the winter time, for me, is a place of reflection, as Ronan said. You know, thinking about those that went before us, those that are walking with us in spirit, those that are guiding us, but also what we've done in the past year. You know, what have we learned? What have we enjoyed? Um, what do we need to change? What do we need to let go of? What do we need to say? Right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give up this, or I'm going to stop these patterns in my life. Or I'm going to change certain ways. So the fire ceremony is about bringing your intentions to the fire. You can bring offerings to the fire, like a piece of wood or a piece of, well, dare I say, turf. Um, you can bring something to burn in the fire as a symbol of letting go of things that no longer serve you. And, you know, the offerings that I will bring out for this evening will ju- just be in, the, in the, the items of food. So I'll have a bowl of porridge oats and maybe some, uh, I always like to have mead or whiskey for the fairies. And also for the ancestors. So it's it's, it's symbolic. It's a, it's a symbol of showing them that we're here. We still remember you. We haven't forgotten you. And we're going to celebrate with a big fire because the fire transmute, transmutes energy. It burns away if you put in a piece of wood and you say, I want to I want to let go of all my troubles, my worries, my fears. And I'm going to put them into the fire. So it burns it away, transmutes it into a beautiful flame of light and it brings warmth back to you. If you stand at the fire, you feel the heat from the fire and it warms your heart. And I suppose the biggest thing for me about this and about doing these ceremonies is about community and it's bringing people together to share stories and um, to talk about their ancestors, to talk about those people that have passed and to remember them in a present sense, because their spirit is always with us. Their physical body has to go, but the, their spirit is still with us. So um, Samhain is actually officially on the 7th of November, which is Thursday, because it's again, it's in alignment with the, the moon. So on Thursday, I'm having a ceremony of indoor ceremony where we're going to sit in community for people to come and share stories about their families and those that have passed and maybe to heal to help themselves by talking. Sometimes it can help you to heal some of that hurt and that pain where you, you miss them so much. You, you physically m- miss them. You mentioned that it's a timey time of the year where the veils between the worlds are at their thinnest as yes. well. And I had just asked Ronan Scully, I said, is there something there? Is there that kind of pull that people might find this time of year? They might know what it is, but mm. they might get it. Can you, what's happening? Can you explain that to us? It's, a, it's an energetic pull. It's a, like we live in a, in a physical body, but inside that physical body or what actually makes us move and makes us who we are is, is our, our spirit body or our soul or our energy body, depending on, you know, people call it different things. But, you know, if you want to get scientific about it, we're all just made up of bundles of energy. So that energy is what you feel. And yes, you do feel a change in the seasons with the energy. And at this time, you know, personally, I feel... I feel the presence of my ancestors close by at this time of the year. I feel them regularly, but at this time they seem to be all kind of gathering because they know I'm preparing a a celebration specifically for all of them so that we're, you know, showing them how much we care and how much gratitude we have for, you know, if they if they didn't exist, I wouldn't exist. So without them, 
And it's not like it's this new theory that some no. influencer came up with. It goes right no. back into the very it's, origins it's of the, the species of as country. well. Anyway, yeah. Tell us when it's happening and where it's happening if people can get involved. Yeah, we're out in Killy tonight at 8.30. So it's at, at, the, at my home uh, R35 A522. Um, everybody's welcome to come. Just come along, bring a warm jacket, although I don't think it'll be cold and the fire mm. will be big. It'll be big as well. And <laughs> uh, yeah, it's look, it's about community. I'm all about trying to bring people together who, you know, like you say, people might be feeling something, but they don't know what it is. And then not mightn't be sure whether they can say it out loud because they might mm. think it sounds weird. But if they come along to the fire, there's lots of us there who speak a lot of weird things and none of it's weird. But we'll just say it as it is and say how we feel. And it is it's all about just connection, bringing that connection together and letting people know we've all lost somebody and we are thinking about them, especially at this time. And you're going into the darker months, which can be heavy. The energy can be heavy for people. Yeah, and it's and it's not just it's not just you, any no. listener listening. It's not just them. It is exactly. it's, it's everybody as we well. All like, feel it, it. it is there as well. And yeah. um, one listener's text and said, "Hey, Ron, I'm going to the graveyard with flowers. My husband passed away uh, two months ago, so it's a sad time for lots of people. Yeah. Like, so that's exactly it. Exactly. Michelle, yeah. thank you so much for that, and Thanks, and uh, all the best with the with the ceremony later on and the events during the week as well. I will yes. let you out as well. I'll be take a quick break. After that, we'll be back and uh, we'll just look maybe at how the, our, our ancestors and dead maybe are remembered in Indian cultures." as well. The Saturday View with thanks to Lumclean Energy pioneering innovation powering progress LumcleanEnergy.com Before we wrap up on just November and re- using as a month to pause and reflect and remember just want to alert you to an evening with Catherine Fulvio on Thursday 21st of November at 7pm at the Tullamore Court Hotel Tullamore College Parents Council are delighted to announce that they have arranged an evening with the renowned celebrity chef and owner of Bally Knockin House and Cookery School um, On the evening Catherine will bring those attending through tips tricks and recipes that will assist all to prepare for the new festive Christmas season additionally all present will receive a free recipe book of the recipes that Catherine prepares on the evening as well tickets are priced at 25 euros and are available at willwego.com and if you just go on that web page you'll be able to see the Tullamore College event there and uh, you can book your tickets there they're also available at Tullamore College or through the Tullamore Court Hotel reception um, and they'll be available on the evening too if you don't manage to secure one but get in get early and get booked just before we wrap up as well we're just kind of starting during the break about Indian and Hindu culture around ancestors as well and Sugina you were saying there's very specific things that are done in, in Hinduism to, yes. to reflect and remember ancestors Yes uh, as I was listening to Michelle talking about it uh, she was mentioning something about leaving food for their ancestors when uh, she is making a, a lunch or dinner and uh, we have a similar type of uh, culture in India, in uh, mostly it is in Hindu culture, and uh, people used to leave a little bit of food, uh, what whatever they have prepared outside for the crows to come in and feed, and they feel that the crows are the part of ancestors who would come in who uh, who died before, and once the crows come in and eat, they feel like they have their past generation who have come who have come and visited them. So it is a similar story which uh, Michelle shared now and I feel that most of our cultures are very interlaced, I would say. I think so, yeah. And, and that becomes apparent. And I think some cultures think they originated something, but it goes so far back as That's well. And true. there's so many, so many things are the same in terms of the fires, the light bringing in. But also, as Michelle said, there is that energy thing that connects us more with the past as well. So I think for anyone listening, maybe that's a thing. That's an objective for November. Slow it down a small bit. Pause. Go with the flow, as they might say, and and see where it brings you. And uh, you've heard of some fantastic events taking place. But anyway, Saginia, thank you so much for coming this morning as well. Uh, that is it for Saturday View for this morning. And um, thank you all for listening. And thank you for your texts as well. Huge engagement. Lots of you actually on your way to remember loved ones and reflect and pause and, and look at yes we are getting ready for another season coming and a pretty big event but we can take time we can pause and um, go from there Lorraine McCormick is here next with Feel Good Saturday I'll talk to you all on Taking Care of Business on Tuesday have a great weekend